You're watching Moby Mike Pumpkins on YouTube. All right, guys, I think I'm going to do a soil test. I didn't do one last year. I'm not terribly worried about it, but I kind of want to do something different with how I'm going to fertilize this year. So I kind of need to see where I'm at. So I got a, I believe that's a 12 inch sampler, 12 inch soil sampler. And if you get one of these, I would recommend getting a stainless one. This one is steel. And every year I got to wire brush all the rust out of it. Otherwise my iron's going to be off. So I actually pulled the sample the other day. So it's probably already rusting again. You can kind of see maybe some rust in there. You can see where it's not polished up there. Pretty crappy. But anyway, all you do is you just come along here. You stuff this in the ground. It's going to be hard for me to do because the ground's kind of tough here. Let me pull that. Let me push that in and we'll pull it out for you and I'll show you what we got. All right. And there you go. There we got a nice plug of soil there. Then we just go ahead and tilt her over here, drop the plug in, and then you get a whole bunch of these. See, I already mixed this up because I already sent this out. And I'll just bust it up, mix it all together, and then we'll send it out. So what I'll do is I'll grab about, I'm doing two pumpkins. I bet I grabbed 20 total samples, so probably 10, 10 samples per pumpkin. Zigzag around front and back, side to side, left to right. Just get a good representative sample of your patch so it's not all in one area. Um, like I said, I'm testing like 12 inches. A lot of people maybe don't test that deep, but that's how I test. You can also just use a shovel, dig down, and try and take like a slice out. These work good, like I said, long term. Get yourself a stainless one. You'll be happy you did. I'm about ready to... Next time, I think I'll probably order me a stainless one because I'm getting sick of playing with the rust on this thing. So anyway, that's how we grab a soil sample, and then we'll send her out. So there we go. I got about two cups of soil in a Ziploc bag. I mixed her all up in there, and I'm going to send this off to the University of Wisconsin and get a soil test and we will look at that when it gets back got the patches marked out i put some uh, plastic down to heat up the spots i don't know if i can get hot enough to kill the weeds this time of year but that would be cool if we could do that i should have maybe covered the hoops because now i'm probably not gonna have enough plastic to cover the hoops and these sheets weren't cut big enough plus they'll probably get holes in them because there's some sticks and stuff poking out of here so anyway we got the patches marked out so this patch is like we grew here in 2018 my wife grew one i grew three but this patch was like pretty big and I've got it trimmed down a little bit, but this patch is like really long this way. Um, so my plants are 38 by 45 feet. So that's like 1700 square. I don't know that I'm going to fill that, but I want to amend all that. And I want the ability to fill the area if the plant's doing well. If the plant's not doing well, I can always just not grow the whole area. So anyway, we're heating up soil that way and hopefully maybe kill some weeds I'm going to try and not till, at least in the plant area. I don't know about the whole patch. We'll see what we do there. So, All right, it's seed starting day. We're going to do the 2520 Schmidt and the 2501 Burnstrom. And then the last couple of years, I've been growing a wolf seed, and I end up killing it out in the patch. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and take care of that right away. She's done. A little sacrificial wolf seed there, so now we can get our season started. All right, I took the seeds out of each package. I labeled them both sides with their weight on them, so I know which ones are which. And then I got a little bit of water here with a little bit of 5-2 humic kelp from WOW. And anyway, just a little, it's not even a pinch, it's just a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to soak these seeds for about six hours before I plant them. So I'll put a paper towel over top so they get nice and soak good so as long as you let that permanent marker dry a little bit uh she'll be good to go on there so all right six hour soak and we'll get the soil ready while we're doing that all right here we go planting seeds got a 25 20 here this seed was kind of weird it was kind of like a big fat one but anyway just kind of put that down in there see the depth maybe three quarters of an inch lay it horizontal cover it up pat her down cover up with the wrap just continue on. And for those of you worried about the permanent marker, been soaking for seven hours, you can read them no problem. So got one last one to plant. Got the germ chamber warmed up, soil's warmed up, ready to go. Should see them pop out in about three to four days. All right, guys, it is April 14th. It's a beautiful day. It's supposed to get up to 70 something today. What we're doing is they're actually working on last year's patch. We're gonna plant a cover crop in there. I'm gonna go ahead and plant some clover. So I got this uh, deer food plot blend, three types of clover and chicory. There's only like 1% chicory in there. So basically it's clover and what we'll do is I'm gonna plant the two spots here. I'm gonna leave that third spot, third spot alone where I had the 
field pumpkins. I'm just gonna let that grow up. But anyway, we're gonna get clover in here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'll mow it like every third time I mow my lawn, and we'll just kind of keep it under control and keep the weed seeds from germinating. We'll let that clover just kind of work on that till uh, till we grow there again. It'll just keep growing there. So do that, and then uh, still got these out here warming the soil up. Hopefully those get really hot today and kill some uh kill some of that grass there I, I still don't know what i'm gonna do with this patch i might still might try and do like a like a true kind of no-till on it we'll see but anyway yeah we're gonna get this seeded up and get that planted oh yeah and another thing i do i've done this plenty of times on food plots cover crops is i just i'm just gonna go ahead and spread the seed right over there till it in and call it good some people will till then they spread the seed then they come back with a drag you know you want to get seeds at a certain depth i just overseed it a little bit till it in it's usually pretty good. The only problem you got to worry about is if you're doing actual food plots that feel like way too many turnip seeds close to each other, like then they don't really produce bulbs and stuff. So you don't want to overseed as far as that goes. But for this clover, I think it'll be fine if I get a little overseeded. So that's what we'll do. Well, I didn't get it on film, but my tractor started on fire. So I put it out with some dirt. I just got some weeds built up in that pan and then the oil and she was a burning. So that turned out all right. I'm going to dump some water in there and keep her going all right we got our clover cover crop planted till just one till there and all mixed in here's our field pumpkin patch from last year see we had done the, the winter rye and look at that just make a nice nice mat and it's like i was moving some of this mat you know and a lot of earthworms in there so we're just gonna leave that be I did a pretty good job of keeping the weeds down there was you can see some of them poking up there, but uh, we're gonna just leave this be, just let it kind of go fallow. And then I think around like September 1st, we're gonna plant the winter rye again. And we're gonna do the same thing uh, next year. So. so we are all good with this patch. Like I said, I'll just keep mowing this clover patch and I'll just stop mowing it towards the end of August probably. And then that way it's just got, clover's got some reserves to get going again in the spring. And then we'll, figure out how we're going to incorporate that all right guys about 75 hours we got a 2501 burnstrom just poking up good deal i'm gonna get i'm gonna get this thing under the grow light right away and everything else is still down so that's that's pretty good emergence time there um barely out but it's about 5 p.m but if i leave it in the germ chamber overnight it could get kind of leggy or whatever so i'm just going to put it under the grow light let it start getting some light there's not much there showing but we'll go with it all right so off to the left there we added a 25 20 so that was about 96 hours from when we planted it and then the 2501 was like about 72 a little more one was basically three days one was four days there's two left in the germ chamber i'm going to imagine that both of those will come out sometime tomorrow all right we got all the seeds up everyone was a day apart that one took three days to germinate that one took four days that one took five days that one took six days that one was kind of an odd seed the seed looked kind of funny but i thought i'd try it so 2501 2501 2520 2520 so maybe them ones in the back there will be the ones i don't know we'll see we got some more time to grow yet a couple weeks so all up and at them 100 percent Still got my perfect record. All righty, time to get the hoops covered. I'm gonna pull the old lath off there. That's what I used to hold the plastic on. Got some new lath, get some new plastic, and should be good to go. All right, there we got the hoop houses covered up with plastic. They just need a little, little final trim and uh, maybe a couple extra clips. And we're gonna get those. We're gonna get those in position tomorrow. It's about end of light out here and. We'll call it a day. So the cables are all in and the hoops are covered. So we're gonna go put these in position tomorrow. We'll stake them down with some rebar, put some extra clips on them. And then I'm gonna be on vacation next week. So the cables will get plugged in and then the solar energy in these hoops will heat the ground up. And then when I get back, the soil will be nice and ready for if I wanna transplant. I won't probably transplant immediately when I come back. I, I got a buffer in there where I could plant as soon as I come back up to five to six days later. So should be good to go. Okay, gearing up for heating cables. So basically right on the other side of this bricks, that's where I determined my starting spot would be. So I'm going back and forward. So that should each be like 12 feet because they're 50 foot cables and you gotta go there and back. So about 12 and a half feet each way. And then I'm gonna do another set of cables coming towards me here and it's gonna be an X. So there'll be four directions. That'll be 12 and a half feet that the roots can follow. So I'm gonna dig those in about a foot into the ground. We'll have like basically 100 feet of 
heating cables. I think they're 48 feet a piece. So I have 96 feet of heating cables, 12 feet each way. And the first time I did that was on my 2520. And I only did it one other time, was on the Wolf last year, and I killed it. So yeah, hopefully, otherwise I would do like a four by four foot and I just do one set of these coils. So I got two sets of coils, that way if one does fail, I still got some heating coils there to keep the soil warm. And I think I can get the roots out, follow them trenches in each way and get them kind of spread in the, in the plant. So spread out throughout the patch. So now that I got those marked, I will turn the X the other way. I got some bricks on each end and then I'll get this dug out and then we'll probably get them in tomorrow. Maybe throw a few amendments in there be good stuff be good stuff yeah there you go folks x marks the spot x gonna give it to you he gonna give it to you so there we go we got the x marked out there 96 feet of cable we'll put in there we'll throw some amendments in there and i'll be good got one done got one more to go all right we're getting the cables in you can kind of see here just there and back make a loop so the thermostat's actually under there you don't want it towards the inside because i'm gonna run another set here and I don't want that cable heating up heating up the thermostat for this cable and shutting it off. So I keep the thermostat to the outside, same as there. That way, each cable is heating up each cable. Anyway, I just kind of put some clumps of dirt in there to keep these kind of apart through there. Keep them kind of spaced apart like that. That'll provide a runway. I'll get some clumps down, and then I'll come back, and I'll probably throw some, like, kelp meal, gypsum, maybe some pelletized chicken manure. Kind of just throw that in these pits here, and make them all good and i tested each set of cables here before i'm putting them in so all right so what i've done we've got the cables in and i've got kind of about half the amount of dirt back in there maybe not even that but i'm just throwing some big clumps in there holding the cables in place now we're going to get some kelp meal some dried molasses some gypsum maybe some chicken manure just kind of sprinkle that all along here on these trenches here and then we're going to put the dirt back on top of it and then that should be a good area for the roots to follow along. You can see these clumps, I didn't really like break them up. I don't want to pulverize them. Create some space for some air in there and uh, places for roots to follow along. Plus, once you pulverize the soil, the water doesn't want to penetrate, right? So, and th this thing had just tons of earthworms in it when I was digging all these clumps up. So all these clumps have holes in them from the earthworms and stuff like that. So good stuff, soil aggregates. So we're just kind of leaving them together. Obviously some of it's going to get broke up, but should be a good place for the roots to follow along. So we'll uh, we'll spread some stuff here and then we'll get them covered up and then we'll do the exact same thing with the other site. All right, we got both hoops in position. Plants will be growing from south to north. We got the east one and the west one. I'm gonna let Charlie decide which one he wants his plant in. That way I'm not favoring my own plant. So, so yeah, we should be good. I need to rebar, stake them down there. They're just sitting there right now so they don't blow away while I'm on vacation. That'll pretty much be it for this week.